Uh, so let's begin today's class. Today's class is about uh, transcriptional and post-transcriptional modifications. So uh, you must be aware of the center of molecular biology that we have been studying so far. That uh, you have DNA uh, that makes or transcribes uh, RNA. and that makes proteins okay this process is called as transcription this process is called as translation you have reverse transcription then you have replication so these are the steps of main steps of standard of molecular biology and here we are dealing with your rna transcripts Okay, before we go ahead, uh, move ahead, there is a detailed description of the central dogma molecular biology that I want to discuss before we move forward. And I'll appreciate you put your mics off. So if I have to ask you something, then I'll kind of, then, then you can put your mics on. Because uh, while recording, and then we put the video on YouTube, so we hear different kinds of sounds because of your mic. So I appreciate if you can kind of mute your mics. Okay. Okay, good. So you have the genetic material. Okay. <laughs> the genetic material is usually DNA. Okay, and is arranged as a double helix. Good. And 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 it's composed of sugar phosphate backbone and nitrogenous bases. Right. So these nitrogenous bases can be purines. Or pyrimidines, purine you have adenine and guanine, and pyrimidines you have cytosine and thymine. Right? Okay, which pairs with adenine pairs with T and guanine pairs with C. Yeah, adenine and uh, thymine has the double bond, and guanine and cytosine has a triple bond. So this DNA is transcribed into RNA. Awazari Sapko? Yes, sir. Which is of many kinds, but mostly of say ribosomal RNA, messenger RNA, tRNA. Right. Besides these RNAs, there are various regulatory RNAs, like you have uh, SI RNA, small interface RNA. You have SH RNA, short hairpin, hairpin RNA, that's usually found in lentivirus. Okay. These are used to silence genes or knock down genes. And knock downs, what is that? We studied in the previous lecture. Then you have antisense RNA. Cytoplasmic nuclear RNA. Okay. MIRNA, microRNA that have a regulatory role and, and, and so on and so forth. So your ribosomal RNA is a component of ribosomes. Okay. <clears throat> and your messenger RNA, okay. This is the main um, expressive part, okay. It's made up of codons, okay. And your tRNA helps in the protein synthesis, 
and there are 20 types of tRNAs because there are 20 types of amino acids and each tRNA combines with one amino acid, uh, amino acid with the help of amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So there are 20 types of amino acyl tRNA synthetases also and 20 types of tRNAs and, and 20 types of amino acids. So these tRNAs are specific and they have this anticodon arm, okay? And this anticodon arm, uh, the, this uh, triplet anticodon is same as that of an codon that's in your uh, mRNA and it pairs with this, okay? So this tRNA has an amino acid attached to it with the help of amino acid tRNA synthetase and this makes the protein then this chain with the help of uh, ribosomes, right? Then apart from this, the genetic material is arranged in the form of genes. Of course, the gene is nothing but uh, this segment of DNA that codes for a divisible product. Okay, you have two aspects of genes. One is gene expression. Okay, and gene structure. Gene expression and gene structure. So, uh, in case of uh, UK rats, uh, sorry, prokaryotes, it's called simple. Okay, the genes are grouped in uh, form of operons, but in case of eukaryotes. Okay, it's complex. Okay. And this genes, okay, they have these introns or intervening sequences. They have these exons. They have this five dash cap. They have three dash polyatel. Okay. So the expression involves your what we call as transcription. Okay, this transcription is governed by RNA polymerases. Okay. And these make your RNA, right? Now these three ribosomes, codons, and this tRNA are involved in your protein synthesis or translation. Translation. Okay, which produces proteins. And how they interact the ribosomes like this. So this is the full slash central molecular biology. Okay, that we have been studying so far. And today we are focusing on your processing of your RNA, right? Should we move ahead? Okay, the next part of uh, today's lecture is your RNA post transcriptional and uh, transcriptional modifications. Many of these modifications take place while uh, the uh, mRNA is being transcribed from a gene or a DNA. 
and some of the changes occur after transcription okay um, so there are four kinds of uh, transcription and post transcription modifications number one is your five dash capping second is your three dash polyadenylation Also, the third is your splicing. And fourth is your histone mRNA processing. If we see the structure of uh, an mRNA when it's fully produced, so you have this region. That is the main ORF or the protein coding sequence. Okay. If you go towards the five prime end, so that means this end, so this is five prime and this is three prime. We say that we are moving upstream. And if we go three prime towards three prime, we are saying we'll go downstream. So you have five dash UTR. We call it untranslated region. This does not translate into a protein. Okay. And then you have a cap. This is your five dash cap. And downstream of this mRNA or the protein coding sequence, you have a sequence called as A, A, U, A, A. Okay. That is the sequence that is recognized by the complex protein complex that are that is involved in adenylation okay this is called as a polyadenylation signal and then downstream to this is your poly a tape okay we're around 50 to 250 is adenosines are added okay so uh, initially we were talking about capping. So why we call this five prime uh, is because if we see the structure of your uh, what we call as RNA, you have a okay. The primary numbering in the, is in this, uh, uh, what you call as nitrogenous base ring, okay? So that's why here we start with one prime, then we start with two prime, then we start with three prime, so four prime and five prime. Now in DNA, this is deoxyribose, you have an H here. Oh, sorry, deoxyribose, you have an H here. This is your three prime OH, and this is your five prime. You have a phosphate here. So always the phosphate will be at five prime, and OH will be as at a three prime. So the bond is five prime, three prime. So you have a bond, five prime, three prime. So if replication is to occur, it occurs in five prime, three prime. If a translation, uh, transcription is to occur, it occurs in five prime, three prime. Most of the cellular processes related to DNA, RNA, they occur in five prime, three prime direction. However, if there is proofreading and some wrong bases incorporated into the DNA, the polymerases move 
towards three prime five prime direction. Okay, that's an analogy. And so, uh, so what happens here? So then another phosphate of the next nucleotide is attached here. Okay. Then you have the CH3. And then you have another OH at three prime. This is your five prime. This is your two prime. And since this is RNA, you have an OH here. In DNA, you have an H here, deoxyribose. This is a ribose sugar, five carbon sugar. And then you have another base attached to this. So usually the bonding in mRNA is five prime, three prime. Okay, it's a phosphodiester bond. This is the phosphodiester bond. The bond that connects a base with your sugar, this is a glycosidic bond. Okay, then when A is paired with T or G is paired with C, this double bond is a hydrogen bond and this triple bond is also a hydrogen bond. Okay, so... Uh, now to this phosphate, in five dash cap, you have a phosphate, you have a phosphate, you have three phosphates. Okay. But this bond that is present here is a five prime, five prime bond. Usually you have five prime, three prime bond. But here this bond is five prime, five prime. How? This is your CH2, okay? This is your OH, this is your OH, okay? And this is your Gonosine residue, okay? So it'll be like this. So this is your five prime. This is your five prime. So that's why this bond we call as five prime, five prime bond, right? So this capping is usually in uh, your eukaryotes. However, in bacteria, there is a capping of uh, RNA. But the, there usually they add NAD positive or NADH at the five prime end of your messenger RNA. Okay, mitochondrial RNA and chloroplast RNA they do not have a cap. Okay, it's only in your messenger RNA. Right. So now why uh, this, uh, boy, what time is running out? Meeting will end in 10 minutes, upgrade now to remove it. Okay. So uh, now the question arises, why we need capping? Because it adds stability to your uh, mRNA, okay? It helps in, your, in the nuclear transport. Okay, it helps in prevention by degradation by exonucleases. Okay. It helps in promotion of translation. And it helps in uh, five prime proximal intron excision. The intron that is at the five prime end. Okay. It helps in the excision of this intron. Now, uh, what is the process? How this happens is, I'll, I'll uh, run this out. So you have an mRNA with
do we have colored? Okay, so you have a triphosphate here. Okay, and as just we draw, this is your mRNA chain. There's an enzyme called as phosphohydrolase that removes your this is an alpha carbon, alpha phosphate, beta phosphate, and gamma phosphate that removes this gamma phosphate. So you have a condition like this. So then after that, there's an enzyme called as gonilyl transferase that comes. Okay, this guanylyl transferase also has a guanine. Then it has a again three phosphates. Okay, guanine triphosphate. This is your alpha. This is your beta. This is your gamma. This guanylyl transferase. Makes a five prime five prime bond with this mRNA strand, so you have a condition like this. This comes out. Okay, after this, there is an enzyme called as gonalyl 7 methyl uh, transferase. Okay. Seven methyl transferase that adds a methyl group at this seventh carbon of your nitrogenous base of your gonine. So if we again draw the structure here, This is your seven methyl group, seven carbon. In fact, it's a nitrogen. You add a methyl group here. Yeah. So now it becomes gonil. Okay, right. This CH3 that's added to your gonine is from S adenosyl methionine. Okay, so you form a five dash cap that's at the five prime end of your messenger RNA, helps in stabilizing the mRNA and helps in translation also, and helps prevent it from degradation. Okay. 
okay now nuclear uh, export of uh, rna so because you know the rna is synthesized in the nucleus but protein synthesis takes place in the cytoplasm so this rna has to come out into the cytoplasm for its translation so transcription and replication are the processes that occur in the nucleus of a cell while as your translation occurs in your in the cytoplasm of the cell so there's a, uh, a protein called as cbp cbc sorry uh, that's called as a cap binding complex it's a protein that recognizes the cap five dash cap of your messenger rna it binds with it okay and then this complex your cap cap and the cbc complex is recognized by a nuclear pore complex okay the nuclear pore complex and this helps in the transport of this ribosomal uh, sorry uh, messenger rna out into your cytoplasm where it's translated 